The Pokemon video game series is an incredibly prolific one. Just looking at the core series alone, there have been nine generations of games, with each one refining the formula and experience that the Pokemon games deliver. But with all of the various features that have been introduced, some have also been removed. In this video, we're going to go over five features that have been completely removed that I think deserve another shot. Whether or not they will is a whole other subject, but without further ado, let's begin. The first feature we're going to talk about is the Versus Seeker. Present in Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, along with their remakes Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, the Versus Seeker is an item that, when used near enemy trainers, may allow you to rematch them. If you've made enough progress in the game, some of them may even be at a higher level or have more Pokémon, so it's really a good way to get some extra experience or money. Especially during the main game, when something like rematching the Elite Four isn't available. Now, the concept of rematching trainers is something that's present in most Pokémon games. Whether it's the Pokénav in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald and their remakes, or the Pokégear in Gold, Silver, and Crystal and Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, or even just rematching certain bosses in most of the games, such as the Elite Four. However, the Versus Seeker offers rematches at a nearly unrestricted level compared to other games in the series. As long as a trainer is outside and not a member of an evil team, you can rematch them. Since most areas in the games take place outdoors, that means the vast majority of trainers are eligible to be fought again using the Versus Seeker, as opposed to just a handful that the Pokénath and Pokégear offer. Nowadays, though, trainer rematch options are few and far between. Since Sun and Moon, your options for rematching trainers are just about limited to the Elite Four or things like the Galarian Star Tournament. In Scarlet and Violet, you can't even rematch the Elite Four. Your only option for rematching trainers is the Academy Ace Tournament and the Heads of Team Star. Bulbapedia actually has a very detailed page about the topic of rematches, both involving trainers and things like legendary Pokémon. If you're interested in perusing it, I'll leave a link to it below. The second feature is actually from a game that's not part of the core series. In Pokemon XD, when you reach Fenac City, you're immediately directed to go to Real Game Tower, where you can participate in a couple of minigame type activities, one of which is Battle CDs. A Battle CD is kind of like a puzzle. You're given a predetermined team and have to defeat a specific opponent, sometimes within a certain number of turns. These battles also teach the player about various mechanics in the series, such as Gust dealing double damage to targets using Fly, and some of the more obscure moves, like Conversion. You also get a reward the first time you successfully clear any given battle CD, to help encourage players to find them and at least attempt them. There are also some battle CDs that let you use legendary Pokémon, and other fun matches too. Seeing something like this return would be really neat and help out with Pokémon's lack of post-game content, as nowadays the post-game is mostly just catching legendary Pokémon and battling online, or in Sword and Shield, doing the DLC if you have it and didn't do it. Any kind of additional story added is usually very brief and features very few, if any, new areas to explore. Feature number three is from perhaps one of the most controversial games in the franchise. In the Let's Go games, there's a unique bit of post-game content to try and flush out the nothing that Kanto has, and that's Master Trainers. Once you've beaten the champion, a total of 153 NPCs, called Master Trainers, are added to the game, each with the icon of a Pokémon above their head, and they'll say that they want to see a strong version of whatever Pokémon is above their head. In most cases, this is determined through a battle, but for legendary and mythical Pokémon, you just need to show one with a high amount of CP. But let's rewind for a second. I said that 153 Master Trainers appear in the post-game. That's one Master Trainer for each of the original 151 Pokémon, plus Meltan and Melmetal. If you went through and defeated each of the Master Trainers, that'd require you to complete the Pokédex in Let's Go, which I think is kinda neat, honestly. Completing the Pokédex always seemed like such an unimportant goal. It's always overshadowed by becoming the champion, despite a good number of the professors asking you to complete it as they give it to you. It's honestly a topic I could go on quite the rant about. Let me know in the comments section if such a video interests you. 
Fourth is perhaps the weakest aspect of the game it comes from. Not because it was a bad idea, but because the idea was executed so terribly. In Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, there were a few keys that players could use in their own game and also wirelessly copy over to another player's game. The keys we're going to focus on here are the Easy Key and the Challenge Key, because they enable Easy Mode and Challenge Mode, respectively. Now, for those who don't know the details of these difficulty modes, the concept of adding them may seem perfectly reasonable because... well, it is. Difficulty modes are featured in so many games as a way to alter your gameplay experience. They're great for people who want an easier or more difficult game. And while that's what the Easy Key and Challenge Key do, there are a couple of caveats attached here. The first is that these keys are only unlocked after defeating the champion, meaning that, while you can easily play the post-game on Easy Mode or Challenge Mode, in order to play the main game on either Difficulty Mode, you'd have to get the key from someone who's already beaten the game. The second caveat is that these keys are attached to your save file, and you have to delete your save file to be able to save in the new game. So these keys can't even be used as a pseudo New Game Plus type of deal. If you want to play the main game on Easy Mode or Challenge Mode, you have to get the applicable key from someone who's already beaten the game. Oh, and now might be a good time to say that the Easy Key and Challenge Key are version exclusive, because of course they are! The Easy Key is obtained in White 2, and the Challenge Key is in Black 2. Again, you can copy the key over to another player's game, meaning you could send the Challenge Key from Black 2 to White 2, but this still adds another layer of stupidity to the whole thing. But, if you're able to get a save file set up so that you have access to Easy Mode or Challenge Mode out of the gate, there's one other thing you should know about. The intent of Easy Mode is to lower the AI and levels of Trainer's Pokémon, and Challenge Mode would increase the AI and levels. This is true, but... The game still calculates the stats of these Pokémon as if they have the level of their normal mode counterparts. This baffles my mind because it makes Challenge Mode easier than it should be, and Easy Mode harder than it should be. This doesn't completely invalidate these modes, Challenge Mode in particular, but this is such an odd quirk of these modes that's kind of the cherry on top of a sad Sunday. These keys are annoying to get, and they only kind of function correctly. I really hope Game Freak revisits the idea of difficulty modes, but properly implements them this time. As I stated at the start of this section, there's nothing wrong with difficulty modes, especially in a series like Pokémon where there are vastly different skill levels of players, but it needs to be executed correctly, and that's not what happened in Black 2 and White 2. The final feature I'd like to see return is one that's been absent for over a decade. The Battle Frontier. Present in Pokémon Emerald, Platinum, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the Battle Frontier takes the idea of Pokémon battles and adds a unique spin to them. Each incarnation of the Battle Frontier featured various facilities for you to test your battling skills at, most of which have some unique rule attached to them. However, there is always one facility that has regular battles with no rules attached, the Battle Tower. Each of these facilities are led by Frontier Brain, the big boss of the place, and you'd get a stamp or a badge or some kind of symbol for beating each of them. It was a fun time sink, and with the games keeping track of your winning streak in each facility, you could also challenge yourself to beat your longest streak. Probably the biggest problem people have with the Battle Frontier was that most facilities required competitively viable Pokémon, which were difficult and time-consuming to get in the older games. But with the improvements that have been made to breeding, and the introduction of items like bottle caps, mints, and ability capsules, you can turn literally any Pokémon you want into a competitively viable one. Unfortunately, as things stand right now, the Battle Frontier is unlikely to ever return. In an interview posted on PokemonMillennium.net, an Italian website that shares Pokemon news, Junichi Masuda was asked why Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were easier games, to which he responded, We created a balanced game that was suited for our time and age, 
where everyone is very busy and young people have various means of entertainment. Using smartphones and other devices, they can access a great number of games, so the time they dedicate to a single game is less than in the past. The player can choose to keep on playing after the main story and continue to the post-game, where the difficulty rises and there are much more difficult trainers and challenges to overcome. The next question, why wasn't the Battle Frontier in the remakes, is answered with, This question is connected with my previous answer. We didn't include the Battle Frontier for this very reason. Below this answer is a note from the interviewers that reads, In short, he means that they didn't include the Battle Frontier because only a very small number of players would have fully appreciated and made use of this feature. Nowadays, players get bored and frustrated more easily, and they aren't interested in things that are so demanding slash challenging. Which, uh... I honestly don't know how to respond to that. That's how stupid of a response that is. Now, ever since the Battle Frontier started being absent from the series, there was usually at least a place that mimicked the Battle Tower, so you could still enjoy that at the very least. However, Scarlet and Violet feature no such location, and while it's a bit too early for me to say that no Battle Tower will be the case for the series going forward, especially since the DLC isn't out yet, it's a concerning omission, to say the least. And on that jolly note, let me know what you think of this list in the comments section. Would you like to see these features return? Is there a feature I forgot about? I'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you want to help the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and make sure you're subscribed. And check out what's on the screen for some more Pokemon content. A big thanks to Lord McAfee, Mithril Monarch, and the rest of my patrons for going the extra mile and financially supporting the channel. See you next time, everyone.